welcome back to the Agent Gold Mine. Here's what to expect to learn in today's show. Whether you should start out working rentals instead of just jumping right into sales, what Toastmasters is and why you should care, how to attract your ideal client on Instagram, including specific steps on exactly what to post and how often, and stick around to the end for the biggest Instagram mistake that our guest wish he learned earlier in his career. Today, we have Andres Bustamante, or on social media, he is Andres Busta TX. He's out of Austin, Texas, and he has been a friend of both of ours for some time now. He has had his license for five years, and the first couple of years, he was a part-time agent because he got his license at the age of 19 while he was still in college just to make some quick extra cash. And during that time, he got a million dollar buyer. (laughs) And since then, he's been full-time. He's been crushing it on social media. He has almost 30,000 followers on TikTok, almost 12,000 followers on Instagram. So he's definitely, definitely up to speed with social media. In the past 12 months, he's closed 37 transactions, and that's 19 million in volume, having sold a total of 100, over 100 homes since he's been licensed in 2019, and with about 50 million in volume. So let's bring on Andres. This is The Agent Goldmine, where you'll find real talk, shit talk, and ambition. We're here to build real businesses and be more than your average agent. We want to know what the killers are actually doing within their businesses, the reality of it. All tactical, no fluff. So we're here to find out. Please share and enjoy. Yeah. Andres, you, okay, you started in rentals, which not a lot of people do. We're super curious. Would you do that again? Would you recommend it? Why did you start in rentals? That whole thing. 100% rentals is probably the best thing as a new agent, or maybe if you're not getting enough traction, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough sales, this and that. Rentals is the best thing because firstly, it gets your feet wet. You know, a lot of the times people with the sales, with buying, it's very stressful. And that's true. When I was starting off, I was super stressed with the dealing with so much money. Rentals is way less skin in the game. You really get to know how to negotiate, how to talk to property management companies, how to talk to a lot of people and just doing things in general that will set you for success for whenever it comes to helping people buy and sell. And this is probably the best way to help top agents. And maybe you want them as your mentors. Be like, hey, I know you're extremely busy and occupied. What I want to do is be of service to you. Who can I help that you know that you might not want to take care of rental wise? And I'll do it for free. Just let me know. Best way to get a mentor, ask for ask for nothing in return. Just do be of be a service as much as possible. Dude, I love that answer. Okay, but so I'm thinking there's, I'm listening, I'm in the heads of the people who are listening and they're like, but I need money. I need money right now. What, and, what would you say to those people well, who are, don't want to work for, I don't know. What? Well, look, rent, it's not necessarily, what I mean by for free is more so you'll obviously get paid a percentage of whatever is made through the rental. If someone would tell me that, I would be like, dude, take all of the percentage of it. Because at the end of the day, you just don't want to be that agent that, hey, I can't help you. It'd be more so, hey, look, right now, my focus is on buying and selling and doing the best possible job. And I know that if I would help you with this rental, I wouldn't give you the 100% that you deserve. So I'm going to have another agent help you because I know they'll do a great job. So it's not necessarily working for free. With the rentals, you will get paid. And honestly, it's faster than a buyer or a seller because the rentals usually it's, hey, I have, I need to look for something within the next two, three weeks. And when that closes, they pay you. So rentals can be faster paid. And it's more it's more quantity of people looking for rentals and people looking for buyers, you know? And they're not... A, sometimes buyers and sellers, if you Dude. don't do your your buyer presentation as, as well, they're not like as solid, you know? Renters won't really flake. <laughs> totally. Well, and it's one of those things like to counter the own fake objection that I just had about gets free. Well, it's no, like you said, you still are getting compensated, but also it is education and it's like invaluable education, getting just like you said, less skin in the game, more reps, talking to people, understanding like how to use the MLS and how to show homes. And all of those little things are invaluable forms of education that even if you're not getting paid, it's like in the big picture, it's really like the experience will pay you. If you're a new agent, That is the main thing I would be focusing on right now. Like you said, you get to learn how to talk to agents. You get to learn how to negotiate. 
look at the MLS. If you're a new agent, do rentals, do two to three networking events per week, do two open houses a week and post once on social media per day. And trust me, you will find the clients and they'll come to you if you do that consistently. What would you recommend for agents that are in locations that where the rentals do not pay? Like Tucson pays maybe $25. Not all rentals, wow. rental markets pay anything. What would you suggest? It, say, say, because you're in Austin, say Austin was also a market where they didn't pay for rentals. What would you suggest for, for yourself if you were in that position or for others? What I would suggest is talking... You firstly, any new agent, I'd recommend 100% joining a team, join a team. And then from there, you talk to your team leader and give them something along the lines of, I know service is of the utmost importance to you. And we want to best serve as many people as possible. So on the rental side, if they're not paying, are you open to potentially paying me like 500 for every rental? Because at the end of the day, these rentals might turn into opportunities for buyers and sellers. So are you potentially willing to lose that opportunity? You ask your team leader. And then I'm sure they'll be like, I'll pay you. For, I would pay 500 for someone to take care of all my rentals. If they're smart, which I hope your team leader is, they should, they would be willing to do that. So phrase it more so it's, are you willing to potentially lose that opportunity? And look, we'll work all the buyers and sellers together. Something along those lines. That's what I would say. Everyone knows someone. And it's not just the rentals. If you do a great job with something as simple as a rental, I've legit gotten people. This story is crazy, actually. So my first ever sale that I did when I was 21 was a $1 million sale referral from a freaking renter. And I was a student and I did a great job and I helped the student get a $1,200 apartment a month. And this renter was like, Hey, I have a friend and they're needing help. So I was like, okay, perfect. The rental. And I got on the phone with the guy and he's, yeah, I'm looking for a property from 1 million to 3 million. That was the biggest testament. Like when I was starting off when I was 21 to the fact that referrals are just massive. If you do a good job for someone, they know a lot of other people and they'll be like, oh, real estate. I relate that with a great job that Andres, Shelby or Ali did. So let me go with them for help. It's insane how referrals work. So being that that was your first transaction on the buyer side and you're in college, you know, like did did they have any objections? Did you bring in your team? What what did that I'm curious to know what that looked like. You're doing only rentals, you know, twelve hundred dollars, and all of a sudden, someone's, oh yeah, casually just want a million dollar home. My budget is yeah. up to three mil. Like, what and was you shit your... your pants? Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Just a... I was like, hold up, <laughs> let me mute this. Yeah. <laughs> it was no. How did, yeah. How did how did the that go? First reaction is like those moments, you know, when. Your friend is on the phone and you see their face completely change and you're like, yo, something's going on. I was in the cafeteria like of my dorm and my friends were like, yo, what's going on? And I was like, I need to walk away. I was like in disbelief. And I told the guy, I was like, yeah, I can help. Of course, I've done this before. And I hang up and I'm like, what the hell am I going to do? Obviously, imposter syndrome was the first thing that came to my head. I was like, dude, I'm 21. Freaking a year, two years ago, I was legit calling my mom. Can I mix these clothes for the laundry? Does, is it cold water, hot water? You know, I was like, dude, what the hell? So it was, it's funny, just imposter syndrome with anything that you do the first time will come. And you're like, am I worthy this, this and that? All of those things came up. I educated myself as best as I could. But at the end of the day, I knew that if I did this on my own for the first time, that client would not have gotten the service necessary. So I told the best agent that I knew. This was when I wasn't on a team. It was just me solo. I told the best agent that I knew. Look, dude, you're going to help me out, but I'm going to be able to ask any questions, shadow anything, anything that I want to do. And obviously the agent said yes. So we split it 50-50 and it was amazing because I learned so much and it got me less nervous because I knew someone that had an expertise level was doing it. And at the end of the day, I got, I forgot, like 15 or 20,000 as a college student, which was insane. So yeah, imposter syndrome did come up, but I knew that I had the resources and I used them smartly. Dude, that's so smart to go to an experienced agent who know, because you got to close, you got to do well on this opportunity. Because if you blow this opportunity, they're not going to tell oh, yeah. all of their other million dollar friends about this, exactly. those referrals that you're talking about. So instead of you like being like, oh my God, I'm giving up. 50% of what I could have. Instead, you're like, 
in exchange for my education and for my future business, would you, you know, walk this path with me? And I feel like that's such a great mindset that like most people, especially at 21, might not even have. So I guess with with that, well, and I don't even know if I want to talk about mindset more. I I I just think that's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this this actually leads Okay, so you you go from having conversations that are like about rentals and with other college bros. It, it's like the the vocabulary is different, I think, when all of a sudden Definitely. you then switch to to helping a buyer with a million dollar purchase. I know that you're part of Toastmasters and you speak oh, really yes. highly of it. it. What does I kind of want to know more about? It. Yeah, people have never joined a Toastmasters. What have you learned from it, and what does like a typical meeting look like? Yes, the the meeting, if I explain it, it'll be confusing, but I'll definitely do my best. I mean, with Toastmasters, it's really like public speaking at the at like the forefront. And with this, the Toastmaster is, I used to think it was legit like toast, like what? But no, it's toasting, like cheers, toast, let me give a toast to someone. And it's so well structured, like no joke. The Toastmaster is essentially the person that will set the theme for the meeting. Every meeting, there's a theme. And with this theme, then there's an invocator. So if it's let go of your past, for example, the invocator will say 30 seconds to a minute about letting go of your past. Then the Toastmaster is a person that explains how the meeting will go. Long story short, though, this is how typically the meeting goes. There's three prepared speeches. In between the prepared speeches and the evaluations is something known as table topics. And that's impromptu, one to two minutes. Based on the theme, someone's going to ask a question and call Shelby. What, what, do you, what did your intuition tell you last year and why was it important? Then you go up, give a one to two minute speech. So it's awesome. Think on your feet. Then after that, there's evaluations. Every speech has an evaluation. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. So the speakers, not only do they get evaluated, but the evaluators, their listening skills are critical. In real estate, we need to listen to those cues, you know, like the tonality of someone, how they're feeling. If an agent, if you ask them, will you all take under asking? And they're like, probably they will. You know, but if they're more assertive, I don't know. But what I know for sure is that my client will take over ask and not asking and we can get it under contract. When are you submitting an offer? That's when you're like, oh, shit. I mean, probably won't take under asking, you know, so it I love I love this group so much. I've told Shelby Toastmasters is incredible for storytelling, for listening skills, for being able to give more feedback, for confidence, everything. You will not get a single negative thing if you join Toastmasters. So you should join. Again, telling everyone to join, do it. It's it's an incredible group. And it's all over the US. Like people ask me, how can I join your group? You can join my group, but if you're not in Austin, there's places everywhere. There's a hundred groups in Austin for Toastmasters. Oh wow. My group is on average, we get 60 plus people, which is amazing. Today I have a meeting, actually. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh my gosh. It's so cool. Wow. Wait, 60 plus people, and there are three prepared speeches and if, does everyone get to talk like this table? No, topic? no, no. Table topics is about usually 15 to 20 minutes and usually seven people to eight people get to get to talk at random from the members of the group, obviously. Yeah, oh, it's so cool. Like everyone should go. Uh-huh. Seriously. I love so it. So I went to one which, oh, just one time <laughs> and <laughs> I think there were maybe like eight people that that was yeah. it. And there, I don't know. I'm sure that there are it's, different types of yeah, toast mat, of like what I'm seeing. One. You have a you had a yeah. totally different experience. In mine, there were people that were straight up learning English, which is great. Like good for them. Get around people that like yeah. where you're gonna be talking English. But it was say, it was interesting. Yeah, Maybe I'll was, I'll check one out here. I would <laughs> there's a lot that do them at IHOP for me. That would be like, no, I don't want to do them there. I would do them like at a place that looks professional, maybe. Sometimes, like, for example, Oracle, I know Oracle has one out there in a really nice building or places like that, you know, like a business setting that looks really nice. If it's a restaurant that for me right right away is like a no, it's probably not going to be what I want. So that right away, I would have discarded that if it's through Zoom. Hell no, I'm not going to do it through Zoom. Like you can't get cues through Zoom. You can't really like you're sitting down. You don't you're not going to do a speech sitting down. I'm so about those little things that if I see it's through Zoom or at a restaurant, I'm like, Dude, hell no. There's no way I'm going to waste my time because it's valuable on those things. And look, they can be great, but that's not ju- that's not what I want. You know, so that's kind of like the standard you set from things like that is a standard you'll set for other things in your life. So I'm really big on those things. So clearly, Andres, you are really good 
with the storytelling that we know on social media, but also like you've given some examples inadvertently within this podcast so far, like in the very beginning, when you were talking about talking to your team leader about paying for compensation for referrals or for rentals. And you were like talking about losing the opportunity, like painting that picture for them. And then even this, where you were just talking about, you can know whether or not the listing agent is open to taking offers based on, and then you just spewed out like two really good examples on your feet. So curious about people called scripts. Some people hate the term scripts because they're like, I'm not a robot, but I guess handling your objections. And obviously Toastmasters has helped with being good on your feet, but in regard to specifically real estate, where do you think your skill set has come from for that? I think through honestly, like trial and error and I need to start doing this again, but I used to have a script practice or dialogue practice every like 20 to 30 minutes. And I love the book of Yes. That book has been great by Kevin Ward. Really, really recommend it. When I was starting off, I would like religiously read that. I would say from like experience of talking to other agents and then also through reading and practicing the buyer consultations and any new agent 100% needs to know the buyer consultations and seller presentation and every all of that stuff by heart. And then once you know it by heart, you then add your own twist. A lot of people always are like, oh, scripts, I'm going to sound robotic. Dude, like they're there for a reason. And the top agents know them very well for a reason. You know, if people say they don't work, it's because they're not good enough and they're probably not going to be good enough because that's not the mindset you should have. So scripts are so important and internalizing them and then shaping them to your your style is what I 100% recommend. With the consultations in particular, did you, is that one of the reasons, I mean, obviously in the beginning you had the 50-50 split with the million dollar person. And I'm sure that was a great learning opportunity for you. But when you joined your team, were you listening? How did you come up with the consultations? Did you like rip off and duplicate someone within your network? Or is that something you just completely developed on your own? What that look like? With, With mine? I mean, it's, it's kind of like added my own twist. But with this, I do them on the phone, then usually get on a zoom call and stuff like that. And it's more so along the lines of What's your goal with buying real estate? Because at the end of the day, I want to see if they have real realistic expectations. How long have you been looking to buy? Because if they see a year, it gives me an idea of kind of like, okay, are they legitimately looking? Do you currently rent or own? And then how long is your lease? How soon do you want to move in? Have you spoken to a lender to see the value and see how much you're comfortable with paying? So it's just those questions and then giving them an idea of, okay, if you haven't bought before, this is the process. This is what it entails with a resale and a new build. That might take 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. It could even be less. It just depends on if I know sometimes you can tell like the personalities of someone they're like this and that. Look, I love whenever I just let people know like exactly detail by detail what goes on just so that they can be as prepared as possible. Is that something you'd like to do or do you want me to get straight to it? You give them the option. And if you're like, "Let's, let's get straight to it because I bought three or four homes. Perfect. I got a referral from a super important person, like super, super important. And I talked to that client and I could tell they were like that other person, like boom, straight. So they're like, let's just get to it. Their time's valuable. So, you know, you need to ask beforehand to where it's not like, oh my gosh, 30, 45 minutes. These people's time is like, they need to be like that, you know? So it's been, been learned, you know, also through talking with athletes and whatnot, you kind of learn how you talk to different people. It's interesting. Everyone's so different, you know? Like your athletes, your celebrities, the way you talk to them in buyer consultation is a bit different. God, that reminds me just yesterday, my wife had scheduled a window consultation because we're looking at maybe getting new windows here in this in this condo. <laughs> this guy, this sale, I didn't realize how much of a sales call like being in the window business is. Exactly. They yeah. sat down, they had a whole presentation. I came in late and I was like, I came in 30 minutes into it. And like immediately as I walk in the room, I could tell where it's like bored. You know, like you could just like sense like the, oh, like, why did I come back early? Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm sitting down, like my verbal, my, 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 my cues are just like not exactly. I like an asshole, but I wasn't just no. the most friendliest, you know, like Dude, I'm it's... falling asleep as no. you're talking, like pick up on this. Why are you yeah. talking about a door when we called you about windows? Get out of the house. That's the thing. <laughs> like, in real I don't know. State. Yeah. I mean, that's a perfect example. Like in real estate, you have to listen and see those cues. And if 
you'll learn it sooner or later. But I remember when I was starting off, I didn't really catch on that well with that. And that's the reality. I mean, that's why you want to have a mentor. That's why you want to take the reps. You know, the sooner you can get the reps, the more you'll learn. But sooner or later, you start catching on. You're like, okay, maybe I have to adjust with this and that. So that's a perfect example. And I'm sure if they would have started with a story, you know, maybe a story to relate to you as people, maybe that would have caught your attention more as opposed to going straight with facts that are, dude, they're boring. You know, if you start with a story, that's when your emotions get in and you're like, damn, okay, I can relate to those other people. I want the same level of service. That's why storytelling is so important sometimes. Can you give a little example of a story, like hypothetically? And maybe, maybe because my other question was, how do you talk to athletes? So maybe we combined those. Is there, if I'm an athlete, obviously, just kidding. I'm, I'm a pro soccer player because that's, you know, kind of your thing. What what story might be helpful to kick it off with? It depends on the buyer consultation, kind of like with with what goes on with athletes and whatnot. They have financial advisors. So I'd want more information. But let me I mean, I can give you an example. So one of the players I helped about two to three years ago, they didn't have much knowledge on real estate. And that's normal. You know, as an athlete, sometimes it's I'm making so much money that, you know, what's never going to go away. And with this, the I was talking to this athlete and they're like, look, I've heard that real estate's great. I haven't really seen it firsthand, but I want you to help me. So perfect athlete barely had gotten into soccer and they were making really good money and not much knowledge on real estate, which is normal. So we were able to get them a house and we had spoken about equity and how all that works and whatnot because he had rented before. It was only rentals and kind of this athlete, funny enough, was like 19, 20 years old. They're very young and they were always taught that with real estate, it's like, oh my gosh, it's going to be more than your mortgage and this and that. So there, you know, those, there's those things and also 20% down. And at that time being so young, it's, I don't want to put 20% down. So with this, I educated the athlete that it's like, Hey, you know what? You can put 5% down and you know what? The mortgage can be less than your rent. If you house hack. So with this is when you went rent one, you live in one room, rent out the others, And we closed on that house and the athlete was like, oh my gosh, you know what? I am paying actually less in rent. So paying less in rent, firstly, then they started learning about equity building. Like a year, two years later, their house was worth way more. And they're like, my gosh, is like with rentals before, was I just throwing money down the drain? Yes, that was a reality. And they're like, so why was I renting? You know, because they didn't know. It's like, why was I renting? And then they're like, so my house now is worth a hundred thousand more and I can sell it and make 60,000 with commissions and whatnot in one year. Yes. And that was just with one year of owning. What if I owned another property that I bought next year and did the same and then did the same. And what if I start renting them out? Is that how it works? Yes, dude, that's how it works. But they just didn't know. So I didn't tell that story, but it would be more so along the lines of, I would make it relatable to that other athlete and be like, look, they were renting before. There was the misconception. We learned that this wasn't the case. They bought. Now this is how they're looking, you know? So how was it before? What problems did they have? How are they solved? How do they look now? You know, it's that step process. And they're, they'll relate because they're athletes, you know? So when when I was also telling that story of of whenever they called me on the the million dollar listing, I purposefully told you all that I was sitting in a cafeteria and I said, you know, when you have that friend that their expression is like, what's going on? And I paused because we've all had that. I mean, I'm sure you guys have had a situation with, wait, what? So that's, those are the things that kind of make it relatable. You know, there's small things, but there's those cues with storytelling that make it relatable. And the pauses are so important as well. That it's, oh yeah, I can relate. You know, there's a lot of small things with storytelling. You went from... I kind of want to shift topics a little bit. You went from being a solo agent where your first transaction was a million dollar buyer to going on a team. How many transactions did you have as a solo agent before you switched to a team? And ultimately, why did you go from solo to team? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 
399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. For sure. The transition was more so the transition from graduating. So I graduated college when I was 22 or 23. And I said, I'm going to do real estate for six months to a year. Because obviously everyone was saying, don't do it. It's not stable, but whatever. Everyone's saying that. My two intuition told me that let's do, let's stick with real estate. So within the first four months, I was like, dude, I'm still only doing leasing. And I was a bit scared. I'm like, I haven't made a sale. I was focusing on leasing though, to tell you the truth. Then I said, if I want to be the best, I need to be with the best. So that was the mindset shift. And I said, okay, I'm going to join a team. I looked for teams for about two months. Met Diego Corzo, shout out to him and Victor Nino. They've been amazing. And we became business partners February of 2020. So I did so many leases, but I only had that sale under my belt. Like only that sale. And when I joined their team, our team is, we don't give leads to anyone. We want people to not be spoon fed. Like we will be like, hey, I have a client. I want you to work with me on it, but we don't give leads to anyone. We don't want people to expect that. It sets a bad precedent. And then at the end of the day, we want people that take initiative. So with this, I think I did my first sale in March within a month, but then I didn't do any sales until the next five, six months. So it did definitely take a while. So before that team, I only had that sale under my belt, but a, a tons of leases. How did you know as, as you were interviewing around, uh, how did you know that, I guess, define the best, you know, like when, when you found Diego and Victor, what was it about them? Was it the, the, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. What one was it thing, about them? Yeah. One thing that's important is knowing the offer that you value, the offer that you value, the value that you offer. <laughs> it's knowing the value that you offer because at the end of the day, yes, I was nervous whenever they were kind of like interviewing me, but I also knew that I had a ton of value to offer. So I was also like, look, I'm going to ask my questions because a lot of the times I know, because I've done this, it's, oh my gosh, I need to join their team. I need to, need to, need to. And you forget that, look. It's also important to kind of have your question, questions ready because maybe right off the bat, it seems like a great team, but they answer those questions. Maybe it's not the right fit, you know? So for me, I, uh, <laughs> this is one thing I vividly remember. I knew they were doing very well. They were doing very well. So that was one thing. But another thing for me is integrity. So when I was doing leasing and this was kind of the last thing that was like, I need to join another team. I, well, Baxter, I was doing solo, but it was under a company. So one of my clients back then, they had leased a property because there was an incentive that was being offered, like one month free. When we finished the lease and everything, the company, the, the whatever we got the lease for, they were like, we're not offering that month. And I was like, dude, are you serious? This is the reason my client got it. So I talked to my manager and I'm like, dude, the commission that I'm going to be paid, I'm going to give it to them. There's a split that you guys have with me. I want you guys to give that commission split to my client. And they're like, no. And I said, dude. Come on. It's like about doing the right thing. And I don't know if it was no, but it was more so, oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's done, whatever. But I was like, no, I'm going to do the right thing. So yeah, I think I had to find a way to, to pay him. I, maybe it was out of my pocket or part coming. I don't know. But I did that. And then I asked Victor and Diego, okay, guys, have you ever had situations like that? What do you do? And they start laughing. It's yeah, we learned lessons. Diego had a $2,000 lesson to where he forgot to do something and he had to pay out of pocket. So that right there was like, I want to join this team. Like that gave me right away though. I need to be in this team. And Diego and I have had a $40,000 lesson. So we, yeah, I mean, it's always about doing the right thing. Dude, I know 40,000, it's insane. But that was when I knew that that was the right team. And also I asked other questions, but it was kind of like the intuition gave it away for me that I need to join that team. I know that a lot of agents, when they're considering joining a team, that leads are one of the biggest incentives for them to join a team. So since your team doesn't provide leads, what what is like the value of the team? Sure. And I know you're bringing a lot of value to the team as well. And they're, by the way, we love Diego and Victor. This is just a general <laughs> question. Awesome. Of what, yeah. what does the team provide? <laughs> definitely. No, definitely. And look, at th this is the way, frankly, with us. We don't look to have agents. We look for people that insist on joining the team. That's one big thing. So we don't really look for, hey, we want you to join. No, it's more so 
I've seen what you're doing. We want to join your team on this. And I'm like, hey, follow up in a week. And I keep doing that until they keep following up because I, that gives me a good sign. With this, the value that we offer is office managers that write all the contracts. They pretty much set all the listings. They legit anything that is not value providing, you can ask our office managers and shout out to all of them. They're amazing and they'll do it all. Like legit, hey, can you set up tours? Which as a new agent, I'd recommend you set up your own tours to get that experience. But I'm so busy most of the time that I'm like, dude, please set these five tours up for me. Please set this open house. Please set these signs. Everything that I'm not offering, dude, I'm not going to put a sign up as best as possible. It's going to bring more clients. You know, other people can do that for me. Then also the shadowing. I know if someone shadows me, I'm going to provide them so much value. I'm so confident in that, that they're going to be like, dude, this is so worth whatever splits you're doing. Because I know it, like it, but I don't ask the client, the agents like, hey, come shadow me. No, I want initiative. So I know that the shadowing of like me, how to handle objections, how to do an open house, how to film on social media. We had an agent shadow myself and Julio yesterday filming on social media because there's so many different things that make such a difference. Shadowing everything as much as possible. I'll let the agents do that because shadowing is just essential. And then also what we provide as well as the mistakes that we've made, you won't have to make them if you ask us those things, you know? I mean, there's so much, so much that's being provided. And if we give lease leads, it's, I feel like that makes people lazy. Some people give leads on their team and they've been doing great. Nothing against that. That's just our style. You know, we don't want to set that precedent. Do you guys have a team CRM that you like the team provides and then all of you have sub accounts within it or oh, yes. what is like the CRM look like? about that too. Yeah. Obviously we pay for, and we pay for like our office managers. Nobody has to pay for that. The CRMs follow a boss, like showing time. Yes, we, we do have a lot of other things that we pay for, but follow a boss. We use follow a boss. Yeah. And dude, I've loved follow a boss because it gives you your own number. The CRM is pretty great. I could get better at using a CRM 100%. And that's one thing that I, need to get better at. But yeah, follow up boss has been great for all of my leads. And if I want an agent that's helping me out, you can put them on the same thread. It's great. I'm with you 1 million percent when it comes to, yes. I hate saying this, but like the handouts, the leads, like, the, Dude, yeah, you know, like that. here, come join yeah. us. We'll, we'll take care of everything because then people just, yeah, they, they don't learn how to, they don't know how good they have it. You know, yeah. like it's, it's so the similar to us where it's join us, but also we don't handhold. Like we give you the checklist. We give you the anything. Just ask, take initiative. Exactly. And ask. Very oh, similar. It, to Yeah. Yeah. Initiative yeah. is the biggest thing. Yeah. No. And like very, very similar. I, I've, I've learned that I've had to have this conversation when it comes to, especially new agents that want to join our community and they are assigned an EXP mentor in their MLS boots on ground, but it's up to you to ask them for help. You know, they're not going to take you under their wing and be like, here's the course. Here's when we meet. No, like you, you get your own lead. And then you ask your mentor, I have a listing appointment scheduled for next Thursday. Can you come with me? Can you lead it? You know, that's what they're there for. Exactly. But they can't like no one, no one is going to take care of your business like more than you are. So take ownership. I want to switch a little to social media because previously you mentioned post one, one post or put something on social media every single day. Is that yes. how you gain the followers that you have? Because you have a very large audience. Yes. So it's funny. I became way more purposeful with social media this year. Funny enough. But I was gaining followers, I think, through like podcasts that I was on and some some videos that I would do that would go viral and stuff. And I've always the thing is, I would always post stories, you know, and people would see that then they'd relate real estate with me, which is what you want to do. But I took a step back and I was like, Andres, what do I have fun with and where do I want to gain most of my clients and friends from, you know, because clients, I be, they become friends sooner or later. And I said, social media, I enjoy it. So why not get 100% in on it? And I, I'll share this with you all. I have like my, what's my why for social media? What's the reasoning behind it? How many posts will I do per day? What type of posts at what time? So I wrote down all of that. And January 17th, I started posting one per day. And that's it. I was like, dude, one per day is actually like great. And I would do house tours, hyper local stuff, educational and my day to day stuff to where I could relate with people that I wanted to attract. So I started doing that. For example, I had a wedding on Sunday, on Saturday, and I posted about the wedding. People want to see your normal too, you know, 
and with my friends and dump if you guys look at the post <laughs> i don't know if you've seen zoolander but zoolander makes a face like this like the just like that it's hilarious and i have a group of friends that every time we see each other we make that face so it's also doing that funny dumb stuff but yeah one per day that's when it started gaining a lot of traction and i'm doing one per day until the end of the year and i'll probably stick with that because it's been dude it's been working like a lot honestly and i've gotten so many clients like this week, I got three leads this week and people reached out. Andres, I saw your videos. I loved it. Andres, I like your energy. Andres, I like your energy. That, that was the three conversations that I had with them. Price point is 500,000, 700,000, 800,000. And I got on, the, on a call with all of them yesterday. It works. It works. And to clarify, when you, when you say po you're posting once a day, every single day, is, is that an actual post or is a story count? No, story won't count. So it's a, a reel or a post. Yeah. Okay. Stories can be more. Every every single thing you do, when like, oh, doing the podcast, you know, stories can be anytime. Definitely. Yeah. When when you're doing a post, what when you say your target audience in mind, how are you shifting? How, how are you making your posts to have your target audience? And who? is your target yeah, audience. I love that. I love that question. When I was starting off, my target audience was first time home buyers, people that have the misconception of 20% down. It was more so younger people that just graduated that were like, my rent, it, my mortgage is not going to cover my rent. Like my rent is going to be less. So it was that answering those questions. Now that's shifted because now I get a referrals from everywhere. And now the people that I love attracting, which I'll work with anyone, obviously, as long as they're not assholes that I've told assholes, dude, I'm not going to work with you. I don't want to. So now it's more so I purposely wear soccer jerseys. Arsenal, I freaking love this team. Shout out to Arsenal. I love them. They're from London, Premier League team. And I love attracting athletes, people that that are like, dude, focuses on like health, being healthy. A lot of those people that I've met in Austin, healthy people, they're top of their business because if you can balance your health with like your business, you know, and maybe the gym you go to also, it's like a gym that you're paying 400 bucks a month, probably going to have people that are around that style as well. So that's the target audience that I want to attract. Athletes, people that prioritize their health, people that like doing outdoor stuff, adventure. Like I'm doing this crazy hike up a mountain, like I think it's 15 times. And that's exactly the people that I want to attract. People that do Ironmans, all that stuff. So I purposely wear jerseys all the time, you know, and I talk about soccer. I talk about sports. And that's how I know I'll attract that type of person. And look, I'll attract any other type of people, but they also relate to my energy. So I want people with that good energy and the good vibes. So that's the style that I, that I am attracting and that I've seen through the people that reach out to me. Okay, before you mentioned, which I know we've talked about before, but just real quick on, you mentioned house tours, hyperlocal and educational. So which of the three of those do you feel like do all of them, you know, hit on that target audience, the health? Like, how are you incorporating those it's things into your target audience? A great question. So with that, it's the way you do it and the homes that you see, because all of them have the potential to be great. Home tours is what I've seen does best most of the time. If it's a model home and you just do a dumb stuff, like when you're, right? encourage people to see how I do them, but you do a hook first 10 seconds and then you go into the house, they follow you, you grab anything you see in the model home, wear it, put it on whatever you want. Just do funny, dumb stuff. Keeps people interested. Then with the hyper local, you do a, maybe some awesome restaurant that locals know of and you do a kind of like a hot take. What I did with one that was hilarious, I got 70,000 views was, this is the best barbecue in the whole country, which I knew people didn't agree with, which I thought was hilarious. And I wanted people to get pissed off. And that's exactly what happened. If you guys look at those comments, no, it's not. This was better. And this was better. And then I love, lo I love instigating on comments. I'm like, bro, I don't think you've really tried it. And then they keep, they're like, dude, I have. And I'm like, I don't think so. I love doing that. <laughs> so on the comments, I, I do that a lot. And, th and then the educational ones, because like I said, all of them has a potential to be great. The educational ones, what I've learned is if you're doing, these are the three things I wish I knew before I bought my new build. You do that on one take. Then the next you say, number one, and you're somewhere else. Number one, I wish I would have gotten an inspection because of this and that, whatever. Number two, check if there's an escalation clause. And number three, check if there's several phases to be built. This is just at the top of my head. And you do each one in different locations 
with each take, maybe less than five to 10 seconds. If you do one in a single take, not that it won't work, but those tend to work less because I would do them in single takes sometimes. And I would say, dang, they're not getting as much views. But I did one recently of one take and I had a lawnmower. <laughs> then in the other one, I was sitting on the countertops. So different things that I was doing and that one got like 20,000 views and on TikTok, it got a ton. So all of them can work. What I've seen best is home tours, but it's like a style of doing it that can work for most. If if there was one thing that you wish you learned sooner when it came to socials, what is it? So I'll start with this and maybe you maybe I'll say another one, but you all let me know what you think. One thing I definitely wish I knew sooner was that it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be posted. We've mentioned this a lot because at the at the end of the day, the reality of why people aren't posting is because they're, it's uncomfortable. I agree. When I started off, it was uncomfortable. I didn't like how my voice sounded. I didn't like how people would think I sounded, whatever. A lot of things get in your head. What you need, though, what everyone needs, though, is that mindset shift of if you don't post and the people you could have helped will not be helped. So it's on you. You're not changing lives because you're you can't get over the fact that maybe your voice might, might not sound great. Who gives a shit? If you're helping people, I don't care how my voice sounds, what I do, what I say, whatever. I'd rather have five people thinking my voice sounds like shit and one person that I helped, you know? So that's the reality of things. It's a mindset thing that you just have to post. It's never going to be perfect. Never, ever, ever. So that's the reality of what I wish I knew earlier because I know I would have been like, damn, like the following would have been bigger. I would have been helping more people. And it's been great. I've helped a ton of people, but I know it would have been more. You have a great voice, by the way. We love it. Thank Ali and you. I both support your Thank voice. You. It's great. <laughs> yeah, Andres, so what, what is next? I know, well, and I know that you're going to take over the world in regard to <laughs> soccer and athletes and stuff. Do you yeah. foresee yourself like being a real estate agent forever, like until you die? Or do you feel like somewhere down the road, there's going to be like some sort of a pivot? And if yes, what does that look like? So what I'm going to be doing, I know it for a fact, is like helping athletes and celebrities and also just, I mean, pretty much anyone bet I'm going to be able to choose who I want to work with and when. That's the big difference. Look, people say, oh, I want to work with forever. But for me, the reality is I want to choose when to work and who to work with. That's the reality of those things. So with this, it's going the team more to where I can allocate the time to the people that I vibe with and that I want to work with and that I enjoy being with. That's the future for that. And also just doing more social media classes. I love that side of things like being on stage. I really, really enjoy that. So being on stage through social media classes or through like teaching agents, whatever I can teach, because I know some people gave me that, that mentorship and they took the time to help me out. So it's like my duty also to do the same. And yeah, I mean, on the investment side, I don't want to buy single family homes anymore. Dude, like I bought them and they're great. Just that I don't want to deal with management. I don't want to deal with their. It's like a small return that is not for me, not worth my time right now. So with this, I actually got a, I'm buying a condo in Puerto Rico. That's new. That's super excited for that. Going to Airbnb that, but someone's taking care of all of it. I don't want to touch any of it. So I'm super excited for that. So it'd be opportunities like that. Single family homes here in Austin to live in. Hell no. Just when I get my dream home, but maybe Airbnb's. In London, because Arsenal's there, I'll probably do that sometime soon. And then Puerto Rico, where I want to go and like vacation and stuff, yes. So it's just a different investment side for business. Like I said, it's setting those systems like we just mentioned. That sounds dope. And Shelby and I are both excited to go to your Puerto Rico spot. <laughs> Dude, 100%. I'm serious. Like, I'm serious. You guys want to go? Just let me know. I'm not joking. It's dope. Puerto Rico such a vibe. Hell yeah. I'm actually going next month for a bachelorette. My sister's bachelorette. Wait, what days? Um, I'm going to the 30th, the 31st through the 2nd of June. Oh, I go mid-June. Oh, dang it. Okay, so well, I let me know. I have a lot of recommendations. <laughs> yeah, just keep me posted. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, awesome. definitely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Is there anything that we... Is there, is there anything that you want to mention before we head to our wrap-up questions? The social media, the three things I always say, which I told Shelby last time, Remember this, not perfect, just posted. Every moment in business has a story. And when people think real estate, have them think you. Those are the three things I would have people to keep in mind. You know, when people think real estate, have them think you. 
It's like with basketball, I'll think of Michael Jordan, Kobe, because they were like the epitome of basketball, you know, in their times and ages, whatever. With real estate, the people that follow you, they'll start thinking of you when you start being consistent with your stories and your posts. Stories you can put two per day. So I just went to the gym, whatever, that can be that. And then the other ones, oh, an inspection. These are the top three things to look up for an inspection. Simple as that. Headed to the wrap up. First question is, what is your favorite? Oh, and you know what? This actually ties to the golden nugget that you provided that we didn't even touch on. Theagentgoldmine.com for the listeners. You can check out the golden nugget that Andres downloaded or uploaded, I guess, for you guys. So similar to that, what is, the, what is your favorite app or tool for either your business or personal? Right now it's CapCut. Like app or tool that I use to edit and captions and everything. Definitely. I film with my phone, then I put it on CapCut and then I can send it to everything. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook without having to take off like a the trademark thing. Yeah, CapCut's great. I have a follow on question to that. Not related to CapCut, but in your golden nugget, you mentioned beacons. I've never oh, yeah. heard of beacons. What is that? Beacons is like Linktree. Same thing. I just hate Linktree. No, I'm joking. Linktree, I don't have anything against it. Just beacons was the first one that I saw. <laughs> Beacons was the first one that I saw and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go with Beacons just for the sake of doing it. Linktree and Beacons both are great. It's just like a link in bio thing for those of you that don't know. And everyone should have that on your profile, like legit, make it as easy as possible for people to reach you. It's dude, I don't want to freaking go to, through everything to have to reach you. Make it simple and easy. Have a Google form there. Have your contact info. Look, my, look at my, I think I put mine on the golden nugget and it has everything. That Google form, it's simple. Just ask questions. Are you looking to buy or sell? Just click yes or no. And within what timeline? One to two months, three to four, um, six plus. It's just clicking, you know, make it as simple and put your email and number. I got two of those this past week. Easy, you know? Yeah. And if you're sitting there, oh my God, it's so complicated. You know, I don't want to think through all the things. Don't think, just go to Andre's profile yeah. and copy him. Just do it. <laughs> Literally yeah. just rip it off. Exactly. Yeah. You can put my face on it too. I don't care. Just um, copy it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay, Andres, what events are you going to in the next 12 months? And even better bonus points if you are going to be on stage for them talking about social media like you want. What's up? What's the, coming up? So the events that are coming up is Austin Entrepreneurial Summit, I believe. That's what AES. It's actually this week. So I'm going to that. That's going to be awesome with the Go Abundance crew. And then events like real estate events. I don't have any plan, but I'm sure I'll be going to some any like real estate rock stars, obviously the next one. But yeah, for now, I don't have any plan. I'm sure some will come up, you know. And aside from us introducing you to any famous athletes that we know, which I don't know anybody, <laughs> how can we help you in your business? I would say, I mean, if you all can commenting or like sharing the videos, That'd be awesome. And if you have questions, do it. Like anyone can reach out. I, I've always, I've told Shelby, I'd love for people to join Toastmasters. That would be great. And then just letting me know within two, three months, how to go, you know, did you improve, which you will, if you put the time into it. So yeah, that would be awesome. Those things would be great. Andres, where can people find you? Yeah. Where can they find you? Where's the best place to reach it, out? Instagram and TikTok, <laughs> I would definitely say are the best. And my username is Andres Busta TX, A N D R E S B U S T A T X. Hell yeah. And we are Allie the Agent. If you have any questions, The Shelby Show, get the golden nugget on theagentgoldmine.com. It is for free. That's it for today. Be a bro and share this show. One eternity later. I mean, at the at the end of the day as well. At the end of the day as well. No, sorry, Ali. No, yeah. no, no. But, but I know there was like that pause. But I also wanted to add more stuff. Find a place to rent to then find their first place to to buy. That's like a it's it's a long term game. I think. I think you know it would help. What am I trying to say here? Oh shit! Oh shit! It's my turn, and I blacked out. Hold on. This is fine. Where can people find you? Here it is. Okay. <laughs> so check out this episode. Check out this episode. Oh, God. Rem. <laughs> this is so rough. 
Thanks so much for listening, dude. If you want the golden nugget that this guest provided, see the show notes or just go straight to theagentgoldmine.com. That's where we keep all our resources for you. Till next time.